Good morning. My name is Pastor T.W. Rodden of Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Um, I bring you greetings this morning. Um, for a change, I feel wonderful. I can talk. I can breathe. Thank all of you all for your prayers as we went through uh, sinus surgery the other week. Um, first off, I want to give out my condolences um, for the grieving family, uh, the Poindexter family, um, and the Dealey family. Um, please, uh, everyone out there in internet land, please pray for them as they go through their time of bereavement. Also, um, we will be starting parking lot church at the Greater Mike Calvary um, parking lot in Boykin, Alabama. Um, we will start at 10 a.m. This will last about an hour and 15 minutes from 10 a.m. to 11 uh, to 11:15 a.m. Uh, please come. Um, someone will direct you into your parking space. Please stay in your cars. Um, if you have to go to the bathroom, the uh, ushers will direct you accordingly. Again, I say um, we will not be having Sunday school. Um, we will only be having parking lot church starting uh, next Sunday, which is the third Sunday in June. Um, and I will be sending out group text messages. If you want to come join in with us, uh, please uh, get on our uh, Facebook website and it's Greater Mount Calvary uh, Baptist Church or Greater Mount Calvary. Um, and you will see all of the details placed on our Facebook page. Um, again, I say good morning. Um, you are in for a treat today. I am excited. Um, I'm going to struggle to stay within my 30, 35 minutes time frame. Uh, but again, I don't think you will... Uh, Leave us today. Um, if you will, bow your heads. Our Father, which art in heaven, we come to you this day, dear and Father. Thank you for blessing and blessings. I ask that you keep touch God. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, my throat might get a little dry during this, so please excuse me if I have to uh, have something to drink as we go through. Um, please turn with me to Exodus 32. Um, we'll be reading verses 1, verses 1 only. And it reads, now, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people assembled about Aaron and said to him, come, make us a God with a little G who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. Amen. You've heard the reading of uh, Exodus verses 32 verse 1. And uh, as we all know, we're about to talk about the golden calf, uh, but we're really not going to get into the golden calf very much. We're not going to talk about Moses very much. We're not going to talk about the Ten Commandments. We're not going to talk about Moses going up and down the uh, mountain. We're going to talk about Aaron. Um, this, this will totally be about Aaron. Um, this Sunday, I really want to delve into um, my topic of if you know better, do better. Um, so the topic of our sermon today is if you know better, do better. If you know better, do better. And I'm talking to the leaders of the church, to the leaders of their household, um, to the leaders of, of whatever uh, you tend to lead. If you call yourself a child of God and you're a leader, I say this to you, if you know better, do better. Um, you can never fall in with the crowd. Um, you never can uh, not stand on what God has given you, no matter what the situation. It is your job and your duty to lead God's people. Um, he gave you leadership skills to lead. If he made you a pastor, woe be on to you. If you are a pastor of a church and you're not getting proper sermons together, you're not putting out good material, you're not uh, meeting with your people and keeping them in order. Um, and as we go through, I'll show you these things. Woe be unto you if you're a deacon and you're not doing good deacon jobs. If you're a first lady or you're a, a woman of the church that is of wisdom and of, of, of good uh, standing and you're not doing what you're supposed to do in God's church, I say to you, if you know better, you're supposed to do better. Woe we'll be unto you if you call yourself a child of God and when you're a leader on your job, you're not doing what God has put out there for you to do. You're falling in with the crowd. You're doing what my parents used to say. You're going along to get along. Um, that is not what Christians do. So we're going to talk about Aaron, but we're going to talk more to the people who are leaders in this world. Okay? You can't go along to get along. Um, so if you will, um, before we can get started, I have to give some contextual things. Um, I have to go through and really break your mind of what the world has told you about the golden calf, because most of us have not read Exodus. 
And because you haven't read Exodus, you just read chapter 32 and you have no context of what's going on. And you will see when you see the word God, God's plurals and singular form, you, you have no understanding of what the people are saying and what they're asking for. Um, because so much is lost in translation and so many Bible commentaries and Sunday school books put it out to you in a uh, misleading way. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it's misleading. So if you go back to uh, the Hebrew or go back during these times, the word for God is El, E-L, El, E-L. Um, very simple term. And, and the meaning of, of El is mighty or powerful. And you'll see me looking over because I have to keep a ton of notes for this one because we just have so much to go through. So the uh, meaning, the meaning of El is mighty or powerful, or it actually can mean God in the singular, or it can mean God of gods, meaning that the almighty God, or it can mean gods in the plural. So no matter how you turn El, it can be one God, plural gods, or it can be what the people think of as Yahweh, the God of gods. It is all depending on where they are in their understanding of God. You have to remember that the, the Hebrew people have not been that long out of slavery. They're not that long out of Egyptian captivity where they were a polytheistic people. So not a monotheistic people. If you don't know what that means, please look it up. They were a polytheistic people. So they believed in a plethora of gods and they had a God for everything. So as the people have now crossed the Red Sea and are out in the wilderness or out, out on their own, they're not in the wilderness, but out on their own, um, um, they are, are struggling with the polytheistic versus the monotheistic and, and the word kind of translates back and forth between God, gods, and the king of gods. You got to remember that when you go to a polytheistic form, there is a king of gods and that will be who we call God. But their translations are loose. And I'll give you an example. So anytime in the Old Testament, a word ends in E-L, then the word God shows up in that name. I'll give you some example. Beth-El, house of God. Daniel, judged by God. Elijah, if it's at the front. E-L-I-S-H-A, salvation of God. Elizabeth, E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H, my God is oath. Israel. El struggles with God. Emmanuel, God is with us. Nathan Yael, given by God. Samuel, heard of God. Oh, arch archangels. Gabriel, man of God. Michael, who is like God. Raphael, God is healing. Y'all with me now? So anytime you throw the word El in, you're just saying God. All right. Now, this is going to be important. I'm getting somewhere. I'm coming somewhere. I'm getting to chapter 32. So back then, as a as a transition from a monothe from, from a polytheistic God to a to a monotheistic God, the word L slowly turned into a deity or God of gods, king of gods. This king of God then took on this name, El Shaddai, God Almighty, Elion. God Most High, Elohim, Creator God, El Roi, the God who sees, Elohim, Everlasting God, Elohim, God of the Most High. So these are L words that we use on a regular basis. I, I think everybody out there was kind of calling these out as I went along, but these are five or six names for one God, but the symbol, the symbol the Canaanite symbol for El is a bull. Oh, man. Wait a minute. So when the people thought about God Almighty in their minds, they thought about a bull? Yes. Yes. Because El, the deity, was symbolized by a bull, which symbolized strength back then, prosperity. Okay? Okay. 
Because all of us, when, when we think of God, even though we've never seen God, we felt God, we've seen the miracles of God, we all somehow put what we think of as a face on God. Um, none of us know what Jesus looks like, even though Jesus is described in the Bible having wool's hair and, and, and this bronze and skin, when a picture is made of God, he is fair skin with long, long flowing hair. So then you get this picture of Jesus. Y'all, y'all going with me? So when, when people have put their own picture on what a deity or a Bible figure looks like, that makes them feel closer to that deity or to that figure. So El, God, God Almighty, King of Gods was symbolized by bull. Okay. All right. So when we get down to this golden calf in their mind now, you can't you can't get mad at the people because the people thought of God as a bull. All right. So you can't get mad at the fact that 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 that, that, a, that, a, that a bull or a cow or a calf was made because that's what they thought of when they thought of God, when they thought of building an altar to God. OK, so don't get mad at these people. I'm going to say I'm going to go out on them and say it's not their fault. Now, we got to get a little background scripture on Aaron, and then we'll get into our sermon. So in order, I need you to have Bibles out today. So I need you to turn with me to Exodus 19, and, and I'm going to try to flip fast. So in Exodus 19, verse 24, um, we find that most of us believe that Moses went up on the mount one, maybe two times. But that shows that you have not read Exodus. And I want you all to get on Exodus in, in order to get an understanding of what happened at the Golden Calf. So... Moses went up and down this mountain somewhere between seven and eight times. And each time he'd go up and he talked to God and he'd come down. And Moses was, was alone some of these times. And sometimes God told him to bring somebody. <clears throat> sometimes God would tell him to bring Aaron. Sometimes he'd tell him to leave Aaron. Sometimes he'd tell him to bring Aaron's son. Sometimes he'd tell him to bring some of the founding members of the church. Sometimes he'd tell him to bring Joshua. It just meant whoever God told Moses to bring, that's who he tell Moses to bring. And then he tell um, Moses what to do with the other people. So in Exodus 20, and this is this is a foundational scripture for the golden calf. All right. Exodus 19, verse 24 says, then the Lord said to him, go down and come up again. So he's already Moses has already been up on the mountain. He says, go down, come up again. You and Aaron, I want you to go down and get Aaron. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord. He said, lead the people down now because I just need to talk to Aaron and Moses. All right. Or he will break forth upon them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. All right. So Moses has done what God says. He's going back down the mountain to get Aaron so they can come back up and hear what God says. Now, pause for a second. All right. I need you all to hear this so closely. So in the church, sometimes God only talks to the pastor and the assistant pastor. Well, I, I, I so hear people say this all the time, and it's, it's usually people that, that, that think, think too highly of themselves. Well, pastor, God didn't tell me that. He sure didn't. He didn't tell you that. He didn't tell you that. He told the pastor that. It said, Moses, go down and get Aaron. Pastor, why are you always talking to the assistant pastor? I'm not always talking to the assistant pastor. I talk to the assistant pastor about assistant pastor things. I talk to the deacon about deacon things. I talk to the women about women things. I talk to the children about children things. But everything in the church Church is not meant for the pastor to talk to the whole congregation about. Everything is not meant to be brought to a vote. Some things God gave to the pastor and it's the pastor's job to implement those things for the congregation. Some things are meant to be voted on. Some things are between the pastor and and the assistant pastor. Some things are between the pastor and the first lady. Some things are just for the deacon board. Here, I didn't say anything about the pastor. So when God talks, he tells you exactly how he wants it done. He told Moses, go down and get Aaron and come back up. Now, when he went down and got Aaron and they came back up. Now, this is important. The first thing God says when Aaron makes it back up the mountain is, 
I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. This is 20 verses 2 through 6. You shall not make yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or earth, beneath or in the water under earth. You shall not worship them or serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children um, on the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing love and kindness to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain. It will not leave you unpunished who takes his name in vain. So God just, just jumps out there straight off. The first thing he says to Aaron is not hello, not how you doing. The first thing he says is, you don't make no idols now, Aaron. See, he's setting them up because he knows Moses is going to have to go off for a while and he's going to need the assistant pastor to be in charge. He, he's, he's trying to get the assistant pastor prepared for times when he's not going to be there. I need, I need to take a, a sip here because I need to make sure that everybody hears what I'm about to say. The assistant pastor's job is to assist a pastor in heavenly duties or in churchly duties. But in order for the assistant pastor to assist the pastor, one, the assistant pastor must be saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. Two, he must be teachable and pliable. Three, when God speaks, the assistant pastor must listen. God told Aaron, don't have no other gods before me. And this must have been the most important thing to God to tell Aaron because that's the first thing that he told him when he went up on the mountain. Now, it goes on, and if you move, it says, uh, now, now, Aaron and Moses came back down the mountain because God is given all of these instructional tools. So the next chapter, God is just giving Aaron and Moses the laws of the people. He, he tells them everything you can think of, that anything that could happen down to if a, if a ox gores your slave, um, he even does this eye for an eye. And I need y'all to look that up because that's talking about, a, a, I believe, a pregnant woman getting 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 hurt. But a uh, uh, matter of fact, here it is right here. An eye for an eye, two for a tooth, hand for hand, burnt from wound. It says, uh, I, I just want to read this because people say so many crazy things. Uh, verse 20, 22, Exodus 21 and 22. If men struggle with each other and strike a woman with child so that she gives birth prematurely, yet there is no injury, she shall surely be fine as the woman's husband may demand of them, and he shall pay as the judges decide. But if there is any further injury, then you shall point as a penalty, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. So I don't want to hear anybody else hollering out that foolishness and eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth because that's what the Bible says. That is strictly if your pregnant wife gets hit while I'm fighting you and she loses her baby. Getting back to the context of where we are. It says, Aaron and Moses came back down. I need you to flip over to chapter 24. It says they came back down and now they had to, God had given them a covenant. God had given them laws to stand on. He had told them um, that he was going to give them an angel that go before them and they'd have no problems as they went out conquesting lands. He had told them that he was a jealous God, but he was a just God. And Aaron heard all of this. So Moses heard it. Aaron heard it. He said, now I want you to go back down. Remember, they went up and down some seven or eight times. So in verse, in chapter 24, verse one, it says, then he said to Moses, come up to the Lord. So they went down. Now God's talking to Moses he's saying, come back up. You and Aaron, Nadab, Abahu, that's uh, Aaron's two boys, and 70 of the, er of the elders. Now, God wants the elders to hear. Now, listen to where he places them. And you shall worship at a distance. So he tell Moses, I want you to come all the way up and hear from the Lord. He said, but I need the assistant pastor. I need the assistant pastor's family. And I need some deacons to come peace away up the mountain. And I just need y'all to worship at a distance. Now he says, now sometimes in church, even though you're the assistant pastor, even though you're the deacon boy, you're not going to hear everything God has. Some of that stuff is funneled directly through the pastor. So the pastor got to get all the way up every time. So every time Moses went all the way up to hear what God said. Now, every time God wasn't speaking only to the pastor, but 
The pastor had to be there, but this time he said, I need you to come all the way up, Moses. He said, now I need you to let Aaron be at a distance where he can heal, but it's not for him. But I need him to be praising and worshiping because it's going to come a time when I'm going to leave Aaron down there with the people. And I need him to know the law. I need him to know how to praise and worship. I need him to know how to conduct business. See, you have to get your church prepared for when, when you're not going to be there. You have to get your ch church prepared for if they need to hear from God on their own. See, he's getting them prepared, Moses saying, because he know he's going to have to go up on the mountain for a long time. And while he's gone, he's going to leave it in the hands of Aaron. So Aaron needs to know how to conduct business with the deacons. He needs to know how to, how to praise and worship. He needs to know how to follow instructions. When to come all the way up, when to come piece away up, when to stay in his place, when to be the leader, when not to be the leader. Oh boy. Now, so Aaron has heard, don't put any false gods before me. Aaron done went all the way up. He done went piece away up. Now I need you to turn with me to chapter 24, verse 13 and 15. And now Aaron's gonna be left in charge. All right. So now he'd have been taught what to do. Y'all, some of y'all been taught what to do. But when we leave you in charge, Lord have mercy. It says, so Moses arose with Joshua, his servant, and Moses went up to the mountain of God. But to the elders, he said, wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a legal matter, and the reason he said legal matter, because that's all God had told Aaron about. Remember, Aaron went all the way up and he gave them information on what to do in legal matters. That's what they talked about. He said, if you have a legal matter, let him approach them. He said, go to them if you got a legal matter. Then Moses went up to the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. All right. So now Moses and Joshua going up the mountain. They going up. They going up to get the Ten Commandments. Amen. And he done left Aaron and her in charge. Left them in charge, Lord have mercy. And, 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 and then it goes on to talk about all the things that God is telling Moses. So Moses is up there trying to get a word for the people. He done left the assistant pastor in charge. The assistant pastor that heard from God, don't put no idol gods before me. He know better. And, and, and the deacons know how to praise and worship and how to, how to hold church because they done went peace away and heard from God. And, and, and they know that if they have any problems, any legal matters, you should go to Aaron and her. So they've been left with good instructions. They have a good pastor. They know that God is good because he bought them a mighty long ways. They know how to pray because they prayed and they know how to sing because they sung when they came across the Red Sea. They, they, they know how to thank the Lord because they knew they, they made this song called uh, He Has Brought Us a, Across the Red Sea, um, which is kind of like our song. He bought us, brought us a mighty long ways, Lord. It's, it's kind of similar to that. So the people People knew how to make it, but it's something about a flock. If, 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 if they're not governed properly, a flock will get wild on you. So you have to leave somebody in charge that got some sense. That's why I have to tell everybody out there who's left in charge, if you know better, do better. Here we go. I'm going I'm to close this out in the last 10 minutes is the sermon. Verse 32 says, now when the people saw that Moses was delayed to come down from the mountain, the people assembled about Aaron and said to him, come make us a God who will go before us. As for this Moses, the man who bought us from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So first of all, they, they are trying to promote Aaron to, to pastoral ship because they feel like Moses has been gone too long. So often churches and, and, and other people place the leader higher than he should be. Moses, one, is not God. Whether Moses is there or not there, God is an omnipotent God and he is always there. So you don't ever need to go to anyone and say, because X is gone, God is not with us. God was with you while you were sleeping. God was with you while you were awake. God was with you when you were in exile. He was with you when you were in captivity. He was with you when you were sitting there on the edge of the Red Sea. He was with you when the Red Sea parted. He was with you when you walked across the Red Sea. And Lord God Almighty, he was with you when he closed the Red Sea behind you. So why now? Because Moses can't be seen. 
I want to be honest with y'all for a minute. It was so many Hebrew people. You can't tell me that when Moses went down into the bed of the Red Sea that the last person in line could see Moses. So you have to tell me that there's been times when they couldn't see Moses, but they had to have always been able to feel God. So if you can always feel God, it doesn't make a difference if you see Reverend Broughton or not. It doesn't make a difference if you see Reverend you or if you see Reverend Love, if you see Reverend Benson. If they have put a word in your heart from God and you can feel God and you can feel God, then that means that you know better. And if you know better, Lord have mercy, somebody should do better. But the moment that the cat is away, I'm not going to go any further, but the moment that Moses went up the mountain and they felt like they had somebody there that they could manipulate, they went there and they said, we need a God that we can see. They, we need an L. E-L, that we can see. Now, some Bibles say G-O-D-S. Some Bibles say G-O-D. Some say them. But this is because L can be singular or plural when you go back to these times. But all they were saying is we need to make a sacrifice to God because we've realized that down through the years, every time that things got rough, if we sacrifice to God, L, things got better. So being a congregation, I can't say that they were being bad in themselves. They were doing things as best of their knowledge. Remember, they were just a polytheistic culture. They were just hanging out with Egyptians. So just because God done bought them a mighty long ways, he ain't bought them all the way yet. They still need some good teaching and some good prayer. So it is the job of the leader to make sure that since the leader is supposed to be the one that truly knows better, since the leader is the one that's supposed to be preaching these sermons, since the leader is the one that's supposed to be teaching these Sunday schools, since the leader is supposed to be the one that's checking on these folks, since the leader is supposed to be the one that's praying for these folks and chastising people when they're wrong, you just can't let folks act no fool at church and nothing be said. That is not how church works because if that happens, People will get out of hand. These people meant no harm. They just wanted to worship L. Listen to what Aaron said. So all they asked was, build me an L. And Aaron said to them, tear off your gold rings. Wait, 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 wait. Now, Aaron, you done went up the mountain with Moses. You done actually saw the foot of God. Uh, they described it. They, they described it as he was looking at this platform with smoke around and then, and, and you could see God's feet. Aaron then went up on the mountaintop. As Martin Luther King said, he done seen the other side. And he come back down and all the people, the people didn't threaten him. The people didn't say they were going to kill him. They asked him a simple question and asking him this question, he didn't have any rebuttal to what they said. He didn't rebuke the fact that Moses is the pastor and I can't make that kind of decision. He didn't say God been good to us a mighty long time. He didn't say I know better, I'm going to do better. He didn't preach him no sermon. He didn't say no song about crossing the Red Sea. He didn't say that God is a jealous God. He didn't say he at that and all he went along to get along. And there's so many pastors out there, so many deacon board members, so many people out there that go along to get along. People just ask you a question and because it's in, it's in a group form, because there's a lot of people, instead of you saying what's right, at this point, he could have said, look, Moses going to be coming down soon, but I got a word from God. I done seen the mountaintop. It I need some wise leaders out there that 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 when your senior pastor is away or when dad is away or when the boss is away or Lord have mercy. If you just been elevated to be in charge, if you know the Lord and you know the word, I need some folks to start preaching the word. I need some folks to start teaching the word. I need some folks to stop being so scared to say that my God is good. I need some people to stop being afraid to say God will provide. What does it say? El, God of the most high. El, Elim, everlasting God. El Roy, the God who sees. Elohim, creator God. See, we need somebody that can preach and teach in any situation. If you're scared, say you're scared. But if you know better, do better. It says, he said, bring me some gold rings. 
ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And then all the people tore off their gold and rings and bought them to him. And Aaron, he took he took this from their hand and fashioned them. Aaron did all this by himself now. We always make it like the people built the golden calf. The people, the people didn't do anything. The people are the people. The people that don't know the Lord like the pastor know the Lord or like the head deacon know the Lord or like the head first lady or the head woman in charge, whatever it is at your place of business, they don't know the Lord like you know the Lord. But they will follow you, Lord. They'll follow you into a ditch or they'll follow you to heaven. Where are you going to lead them? Aaron sending them to the ditch. He said, he took this from their hand and fashioned it and graven tool and made it into a molten calf. Why? Because that's what they thought of when they thought of God, El. The symbol of El was a bull. So he made a golden bull. They love bull. They love gold. They thought gold was a symbol of power and the bull was a symbol of power. So Aaron thought that he was appeasing the people. You cannot appease people. Your job is to do what God told you to do. God told him in Exodus 19 and I mean, excuse me, Exodus 20 verses 2 through 6, have no other God before me. Don't make no idol God. Don't craft or make nothing. I don't need you making no calf to worship in front of me. I need you to look back down through the years and if what I did for you so far ain't good enough that you got to make something to show that I'm good, then then I guess you don't even need to worship me. But if somebody out there can look back through their lives and say that my God been so good to me, I don't need no golden calf. My God woke me up this morning. I don't need no golden calf. My God took care of me last night. I don't need no golden calf. Lord, I know better. I'm finna do better. I know they say don't pray in the workplace, but I'm a praying young man. And I, sometimes when folks get sick, they say you can't be praying at the hospital. Well, I'm, I'm a preacher. I'm a child of God and I know better. And I know that you got to pray in season and you got to pray out of season. And it's funny. Even though you're not supposed to pray in the hospital, I tell you what, let the CEO get sick and they start calling for the pastor because people want to be led. People want to be taken care of. Some pastor out there, you listening to me right now? Preach your sermon. And I mean preach a good sermon. Teach your people. Stop letting these hellacious folks run your church. It is time you done been up on the mountain. You have heard from the Lord. If you are listening to the Lord and he keep getting people for you and you keep taking people up on the mountain and you keep training these folks so your church can get better and you keep looking out into the congregation, ain't nobody out there. I need you to take a deep look inside of yourself and I need you to ask yourself this question. Am, am I training them right? Am, am, am I listening to God? Because at the end of the day, Aaron did not get punished for what he did. The people died. And that's what happens today. I'm so afraid of leading my flock astray, not because I'm going to get punished. I'm afraid of what will happen to them if they don't hear a word, because I know better. Some of them don't know anything about God. All they know is what I tell them of God. All they know is what I tell them of El. So I got to preach a word. I got to get in this Bible. You got to be up all night studying your word. You got to be up all day praying for your folks. Sometimes you got to drive till you're sleeping. Sometimes you got to tell some folks, sit down. That's okay. They ain't going nowhere. I'm tired of hearing preacher go, well, church door going to close. They going to close if you don't put your foot down too. But better yet, some folks going to go to hell if you don't put your foot down and say, that is not what God intended. Now, y'all know better. I know you know better. Because all these chapters was God telling you better. And I know you done read this Bible. So all you men and women of God out there that's been letting things slide, when the people come to you and ask you foolishness, you just go along with it. Time out. You know better. Do better. As we buy heads, I follow John in heaven. We come to you this day just saying thank you, Lord. Just continue to bless us and keep us. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 
Again, I say um, we're starting parking lot church next Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. at Greater Mount Calvary Campus in Boykin, Alabama. Um, if you've enjoyed these YouTube uh, videos, uh, come get some in person. Um, we're still going to try to do our YouTube videos, so continue to join us. Um, I, I pray right now that you all continue to be blessed. Bye.